Okay, in this example, I'm simply going to read through the examples that I gave you and I'm going to give some explanations for them. Okay, uh, the examples that I've put in this document. So this is and looking at all the examples I can find of determiners. Two pages worth. Okay, take all but that. Otna tut yenk iguanama. Or otna tut mochche iguanama. Tut otna no iguanama. Now, in terms of the uh, determiners, these ones, the speaker is pointing something out. Take everything except for, and he's pointing at it, or in some way, with his lips or fingers or whatever. Okay, next one. We illustrate all the words in this book. So we show people, all. Uh, we make them see all of the words, this the book, that it uses. Now here we have Oma Lelive and we're using Oma and it's immediately followed by the noun that it's referring to. The next. Uh, I'll repeat that. Yeah. Okay, this meat is only muscle. Yank liner oma la viand. Again, oma, immediately followed by the noun. There's a speck of dust. Oma in tache de poussière. Now there's no verb in this sentence, right? Oma. There's just this uh, a speck of dust. And I suspect that that's because this is seen as Oma is introduced, is basically saying this is in tache de poussière, a speck of dust. So instead of saying, it might be easier to say that, uh, look, this is a speck of dust. And again, Oma is referring to en tache de poussière. Hold on to this cable. Mechimena Oma le cable. Oma le cable, same situation. Pechita uh, tout Oma la place. Clean every, all of it. Tout, it's singular, plur, singular for all in French. Oma la place, this place. This is endless work. No ochat. Nagapayin Louvraj. Not ever comes to an Nagapayin. So remember that word Nagyu to stop? Payu or Payin would mean to happen or to roll or to it's a it's a it means that it something happens or is done without the agency of the person who did it. So I could say uh uh my car rolled away, or I could say my car rolled away, or I could say my car went down the road, uh, and that would be pimipata, pimpatao, or pimuhteo. Hmm, how, okay, that's a better example. Okay, if I were to say my car is going down the road, uh, somebody is driving my car, I would use one word. If I wanted to say my car all of a sudden just rolled away all without anybody doing anything all on its own, I would use a word that ended in payu or payin. If I wanted to say he broke it, I would say, uh, I broke it, I would say, Ngi pigo nen. Uh, and that pigo is to break, and that n means with hand, so Ngi pigo nen means I, uh, Ngi pigo nen um, uh, le quato. Ngi pigo nen le quato. I broke the knife with my hands. If I could, if if I then made a word pigo and I used payu, like pigo payu uh, le quato, that would mean, or pigo payin le quato, that would mean the knife broke all on its own, like I'm not ascribing, I'm not saying that somebody did it, it's saying it just happened. So here we have, no kat nagipayin louvraj, this work is never going to just end. Uh, next example, pad, pad but oma louvraj, and that in French would be pa de but oma louvraj, and it's a French sentence, there is, you know, there is no, no end to this, the work. Uh, Nash pitche pa in oma louvraj. Nash pitche. I think that means nash pitche is like last or something like that. Pa in is that same, the same idea again. So it's never going to come to conclusion. Or nash pitche pa in oma louvraj. Maybe that means it's endless. Okay, I don't know the exact meaning of nash pitche pa in. Okay, that is the best. Eguanama le meilleur. And here we have Eguanama. You assume that the speaker is pointing out something and saying it's the best. That's exactly what I want. Eguanama muechi kawiyayan. Again, the speaker is pointing out something. Eguanama. That's a righteous dude. Kwayesh matshu eguana la person. So here he's pointing out um, that person lives right. 
and he's pointing out uh, the person, Iguanala person. Although he could say, Quayesh uh, Kumatashu, Ana Ena La Person. Now, because, think about this, Ena La Person, Ena. And that could refer to the person, right? And then I would use independent, and and the ena, its referent would be in the clause, so it would be okay to use independent. Uh, however, if I just said, Quayesh Pimatshu Anna, that would probably be incorrect. Instead, I would say, Quayesh um, Epimatashit uh, Anna. I would say a sentence like that, but I would have to have already introduced a person, like, uh, uh, I would say, uh, that one over there, his name is Bob. And then I would say, He lives right. And here I would use Anna, and the refer referent to Anna would be the guy, Iguanama, that I'd referred to in the previous sentence. And you would then have to use a conjunct sentence with A. But in this example, we're using Iguana, and it's just an independent sentence. Okay, he is the dancer. Iguana le dancer. And here again, this is an independent one we're introducing. The rope can dangle from there. Le cabre, le cabre, um, uh, cayi wego teo ago tausche. Le cabre, uh, cayi wego teo ago tausche. The rope, or le cabre, and here they have read it with an R. In another place they read it with an L, so probably a variation in pronunciation. Le cabre, le cabre. Yiwegoteo is to dangle. Agota means there, and usually that's a, a referent, right? Agota is the same, has the same relation to ota, like ota is here, like ota la place, or agota means there. Uh, and while, okay, it's the same, it has the same prefix attached to it. E K W, agota, and pronunciation here is agota. Although in practice, I find that people use agota and ota very similarly, and I think their difference of meaning is not quite the same as the difference between ana and iguana, or, on, or anama and iguanama. Okay, enough. Ekushe, asi, nansi, egoigok. Now, this is uh, some other examples that I put in. Okay, remember, ishe means how? Ekushe is when you're pointing out how, right? So this how, or or a specific how, or a specific amount. I say tan she kia, how, uh, question marker, um, to be, are you, like how are you? If I say ekushe niya, that would mean this is the way I am. And you would be expected, I'm not really sure how you would say that, uh, you could point to something that looks awesome and just say, Ekshinia, I'm as awesome as this thing. You know, it's so it's referring to a specific manner. Again, it's the same type of relation between Ishe and Ekshe. Uh, next, we have Ego uh, which was also a word for enough, and this means Ego is a specific quantity. So I could say Tanama Ego or Tamai Ego. That would mean which amount, how much, right? Which amount? Is here. Tamai gok. Tamai gok. Limanji ota. Iayat. How much food is there here? Now, the answer you could give would be ego gok. And you could point to a specific quantity, like you could point to a gallon bucket and say this amount. Ego gok. And that's again is ego but with the EKW prefix to it. So you're introducing uh, the same sort of thing. Next example. That is generally the way. Ekushishi mana. Mana means usually. Uh, so I could say, La premiji mana datushkan. Afternoon, usually I'm working. Uh, here we have ekushishi uh, mana. And that's just an ekushishi. Uh, Boy, an ekushishi is just an extension of ekushi. Um, like like this, like this. If I'm, well, okay, it's what you say. If if you ask me how to tie a shoe, and I picked up the strings and I said I would say and I and I demonstrated for you, I would say, oh well, kanoafata ekushishi oshta. Do it like this, and I would show you how I was doing it. 
Okay, next example. I hereby announce that I will no longer be responsible for my wife's bills. Miigwat o manditwan. Kayawiak chitpa man etama fam kamashnai get. So what this really means is miigwat o manditwan. Miigwat means now. And here they say miigwat. A little bit haven't changed the sound, I guess, in the same way Grace has. Miigwat o manditwan. Here I say this. Kayawiak chitpa man. Nobody or not anybody is to pay ita mafam kamashnaiget where my wife uh, writes down. Now in Cree, mashnaigeo means to write. In Michif, it usually means to take out a loan, to write, to sign, to sign for money, to charge something. So here, nobody is to write down ita mafam kamashnaiget. So you remember eguta. Now, eguta is not actually eguta and ota. It's actually eguta and itta. Itta means where, like I don't know where I am. Moengshketen tan ne te kayayan. Or I am where you saw me uh, today. Anoch da pin itta kawap mitan. Itta kagiwap. Wapam, is it kagiwap mien? Yeah, okay. You don't know this uh, construction yet, but I'm just going to use it. Anoch dapin eta kagiwap mien. Right now, I am sitting where you saw me. So here we have eta means a place, but again, eta is the same sort of, um, we call it a pro form. It's the same sort of. Uh, a term that has to have a referent. So here we say, ita kawafamien, where you saw me. If I was, was going to point out a place uh, where, then I would say, ek, ekw again, and then I would add in ita. Now the w and the i usually changes to a o, so ekuta. So I would say, ekuta uh, would be the corresponding one where you're introducing new information about a place. And it would correspond with ita, where you have to always refer to something. Um, so here he says, Megwat oman detwan, kaya awiak chitpa man, ita mafam kamashnai get. Now I say this, nobody, I hereby announce basically, nobody's to pay for my wife's signs. Uh, <laughs> apparently this was a problem. Interesting how both of these are women, yet this is the sample sentence they choose. Okay. Accept this dress I'm giving you. Otena o malarob kamietan. Now, accept, uh, take this, the dress. To, and here again, oma is immediately followed by larob. Kamietan. Remember the verb mieo is to give? Well, uh, remember kagawap, uh, kagawap mitin. Uh, I will see you later. Kagawap mitin. The conjunct of kagawap mitin is a wapamitan. And that's the it is the inverse marker. An is how the conjunct has worked for you will see me. Uh, so here again, it's just the conjunct version. It's, an, it's the exact same situation. Kamietan uh, is that I give you. Uh, but again, we'll get to that later. Do you know those people? Kishkema wak eguanagik lemod. Do you know those people? Kishkema wak eguanagik lemod. Um, so here it's a yes no question. So I could add in chi if I wanted to. chi But I don't. Eguanagik, again, in this situation, uh, the person is obviously pointing out some people and saying, Do you know those people? Uh, so it's not uh, people that we're talking about already, I guess. Now you could say, for and then uh, would be the referent for uh, but uh, instead of doing it like that they're actually pointing it out and using so it's introducing specific new information okay next example She is unworthy of him. Oh, bring me those things. Sorry. Pehtamawin eguanehe. Pehtamawin eguanehe. And now here, here you have, they're pointing out, uh, this is an inanimate, right? 
Anehe is plural uh, for those, and Eguanehe would be the conjunct plural. So bring me those things, inanimate. Pe tamawin eguanehe. So pe tamaweo would be he brings it. Pe tamawin is kipe uh, tamawin is you bring it to me, and then the um, the imperative you just leave off, leave off the ki off the beginning. So you gave me some examples like uh, wap. Uh, you wanted to say look at me, or you would put down wapam would be look at him. Wapamin would be look at me. So here we have the same example. Next, she's unworthy of him. So she merits not that man to have. Now here we have an example of anehe. And this is conjunct, right? Because she mer she does not merit that man. So we have the verb ayaweo is uh and then for three for a, uh, a third person to have another person, ayawao, she has him, or conjunct a ayawat or chiawat to have. And then you have and then here it's an interesting example. Uh, you notice that lom, they actually have loma. Uh, so they have the a uh ending on that, that specifies that that noun is conjunct. Imeri pa anehe loma chiawat. Okay, next example. Those are just bobbles. Muhchili's a fair bore, yeah, anehe. Muhchili's a fair bore, yeah, anehe. Now, bore means actually comes from the French. Vo rien, it worth nothing. So mochche means just. Mochche les affaires, uh, the affairs or the thingamajiggies. Bo rien, that are worth nothing. So those are just worthless thingies. And again, and again, that's plural. Oh, and then I have an example in here. She is in love with that man. Uh, she, or she's. Yeah, she's going to love that man. She's going to fall for him. Uh, she's going to fall she's going to love that man. Now here, look at this. She's gonna love that man. Whereas just previously I gave you the sentence she is unworthy of him. Now look at that. In the first sentence, we have that a uh, after the man, lom, whereas in this sentence, uh, uh, you could just as easily put and that would be correct, but it's also correct without it. So again, that's kind of a, it depends on the speaker, it depends on the situation, it's not a hard and fast rule, it seems to be disappearing. Now, uh, the root for this sentence, the root is you might have heard the song Kishpin Kashage Hin Shemak Pioche Min. Well Shage Heo is to love. So ka here's the future tense. Okay, next. Their quarry gave them the slip. Wanehe wak anehe kandonawa chik. Wanehe wak that means they lost it or them. Anehe means it or he or she or they. Again, because it's because it's obviative, we don't know if it's singular or plural. So they lost him or them. Ka, that's the ka conjunct. Ndonawa chick. So ndonawao means to look for something. Ndonawao is I'm looking for him. Kandonawat uh, that they are looking for, that he is looking for, or kandonawa chick is that they are looking for. So. They lost it or them, they, they, him or they, that they were looking for. That's the rightful owner of the house. Of the house. Oh, okay. Sorry, I take it back. There's been a typo in this. Uh, there's been a typo here. That should be, that's the rightful owner of the house, of the horse. <laughs> okay, let me just correct that. 
a wea te pe meo ane he le joala so te pe meo is to own something so i say wea he owns and and i use wea as an as a way of emphasizing that it's him right so i could say e guana te pe meo ane he le joala and that would again it would be kind of emphasize it but it would just say that one there specifically that man where if i where where if i say wea te pe meo then I'm emphasizing the fact that it's him and not somebody else. Um, okay, what was it? I could say, Iguanate pe meo awalom. And I'd be pointing out to you, the important fact would be that I'm pointing out to you that that man owns the horse. But if I say, Wiyate pe meo, uh, Wiyate pe meo, and the hele joala, I mean that I'm, the question is, is it actually him or is it somebody else who does it? Otherwise, I would just say te pei meo and the joala. I would say he owns the horse. We at te pei meo and the joala um, means no, it's him specifically that owns the horse. Or if I said eguana te pei meo and the joala, instead of if I said eguana, then it would be uh, out of those guys out here. Which one is the one who owns the horse? And I say oh eguana, that one there eguana te pei meo and the joala. I hope that makes sense. Okay, that is their car. Now, in Michif, uh, uh, car is animate. And all the words that we would use with horse, we use with cars. Like, get on the horse, get in the horse, get in the car. Okay, that is their car. We a wow and the hen le char. We a wow is plural for them, right? Them and the hen le char. That one, the car. Again, it's it's conjunct. And the hele uh, and it's just you know them that the car, and putting those together means that is their car. He is the possessor. Eguana katepe tak. Eguana katepe tak. That's the one that owns it. That is the one that owns it. Second example, we atepe tam, and that would mean he, him, him owns it. He owns it. So again, it's hard to specify the exact difference of meaning between eguanaka tepe tak or wia tepe tam. I'll have to think about that. Okay, prices are reasonable at that store. Li prix y sont raisonnables eguanama le magasin. Li prix y sont raisonnables eguanama le magasin. The prices there are reasonable at that one, the store. And you're, you're assuming here that he's pointing out what store it is. You're walking walking down the street and the person you're talking to is saying, oh, the prices, they are reasonable. Ils sont raisonnables. Iguanama, that one there. The store, le magasin. Next, that's a reasonable person. En personne raisonnable. En a. En personne raisonnable. En a. Now here we have en a, and its referent is going to be en personne raisonnable that we've just said. So it's within the same sentence. Again, there's no verb in here, but if there was a verb, uh, it could be in the independent because the referent is within the same clause. Okay, what's that? Ke guayanama. Now, here we don't say ke guayanama. We say ke guayanama. Now, I have to think about it. I would assume it's because anama here is referring back to ke guay uh, rather than. Uh, oh, Crazy mosquitoes sucking off my knuckles. Okay. Ke guayanama. I'm not exactly positive why. I guess you'd almost think it would be ke guayanama. But no, it's ke guayanama. That's the one. E guayanama. Uh, what's that? Ke guayanama. Then the answer would be, that's the one. E guayanama. E guayanama. He's the one that took my coat. Wea ana kaut nak mo kapo. Here we have. Wea ana kaut nak mo kapo. Now here we have wia. Wia means he, and think of it this way: wia is just a stand-in for a name, stand-in for a noun. And so when I say wia ana, that ana, its referent is going to be wia. Now, um, wia ana kaut nach mo kapo. Wia ana kaut nach mo kapo. He is the one that took my jacket, or my my kapo. Okay, next one. Discount that story. 
No está puesta mec que cuando mal estuer. No está puesta mec. No está puesta mec que cuando mal estuer. No. She is the same as che. Ta puestam. Ta puesta mec. That is actually a conjugation that you have not been taught yet. Ta puestam is he believes it. Ta puestak is. Katapuetak, the one that believes. Tapuetamik is uh, to believe something. It's kind of a more, it doesn't really, it's, I think it's an inspecified actor. So nobody, no chitapuetamik, iguanamalestuer. Nobody is to believe, or you can't believe that story. I'll get to that conjunction, uh, conjugation later. That couple is indivisible. No pakash. Uh, <laughs> No kapash shke ne gash wak e gwana mala kopl. No kapash shke ne gash wak e gwana mala kopl. Now this means no. Um, they are not going to separate. Ka is is future tense. No ka pash shke ne gash o. Okay, pash shke ne geo would be that he is separated or something like that. Pash shke ne ga pash shke ne gash o. Means he was divided. Pashkin uh, would mean that they were divided. Uh, and it's a reflexive verb. Igasho is reflexive. So Pashke Neo would be he divided it. Pashkin means he was divided. Pashkin they were divided or they were separated. No Kapashkin Nagashowak means they are not going to be divided. Iguana la now here, notice that couple, like in English, is is a singular verb. So even though there's two people, you would say that couple is nice. You wouldn't say that couple are nice. Although in England they would say that couple are nice. The team are here, whereas in Canada we would say the team is here. Anyway, so in midship is like uh, Canadian English in that respect that we would say the team is here rather than the team are here, as in England. Okay. That person is knowledgeable. We already did. Mishchet kishke tam ego anala person. Mishtai kishke tam anala person. We have to work that day. Never, nonetheless, I'm leaving early. Sapran chiatoshke yak ego anamala jorni. Kamem wipat wipat niki wan. So. Sapran chiatoshke yak, iguanamala jorni. Sapran chiatoshke yak, it is necessary that we work chiatoshke yak, iguanamala jorni, that day. So maybe I'm pointing at the calendar or I'm um, referring to a specific day or I'm just or I'm just choosing to refer to that day. Yeah. Sapran chiatoshke yak, iguanamala jorni. Kamem, all the same. That's from French, right? Come in. We put. That means early. Uh, although I would say it we put. I would say we put a matin. And in the dictionary, they would say we put a matin. It's a pretty common change. Like I say me watch. We put. They say me what. We put. Um, okay, so. Come in. We put. Ni gi wan. Now in the dictionary, they say ni gi wan. Ki weo is to go home. Uh, ni and, and ni is a is a contraction of ni we ki one, and I would probably say ngaki one we pat ngaki one, or we pat nuiki one. I would say nuiki one, but other speakers will just say niki one. I am going to go home early. Okay, uh, that ball game was the opener of the year. Eguanama le jeu de plot c'était le premier de l'année. Eguanama le jeu de plot c'était le premier de l'année. So that one, the game of ball, it was c'était le premier de l'année. So if you look at that sentence, Eguanama uh, is the only mitchef word or the only Cree word in the whole thing. That one, the game of ball, it was the first of the year. C'était le premier de l'année. Now if you Remember, you looked through my um, article that I wrote. I argued that French verb constructions like cité or il va être, il va être, or ils sont, 
all French nouns only occur in independent clauses or in places where you would use independent clauses in Cree. So, Eguanema, uh, le jeu de plot, c'était le premier de l'année. If I were going to say, I could get rid of le jeu de plot. I could just say, Eguanema, c'était le premier de l'année. Eguanema, c'était le premier de l'année. That one, it was the first of the year. Now, if I said, Enema, uh, c'était le premier de l'année. If that Enema was referring back to a previous sentence, uh, I probably couldn't use the French the French verb cité. Instead, I would people would use a conjunct construction using a French a mitchif verb, and they would say enema le premier de l'année enema le premier de l'année uh, egiayat or egiayat, and then they would use uh, a Cree verb for to be, and they would put it in the conjunct. So again, this, I don't expect you to master this because I mean, I still have a long ways to go to master this, but this should be more than enough information for you to understand why people say things as they do. Okay, what, that pill is a painkiller. That pill kills the pain. Again, you're introducing a pill. You're pointing at it. Uh, what is the value of this ring? Tanema e gork en ale jean. Tanema e gork en ale jean. How much is the quantity of this one, the ring? So ena here is referring to le jean, and its referent is right there following it. Uh, and the answer I could give you, I could use e gork, and I could just use, I could say, oh, e go e gork. Uh, this much, referring to some specific amount that I'm pointing out. Next one. What did you buy that horse for? Or... Why did you buy that horse? Tanehke katawe yen en ale joal. Katawe. Oh, I see we have a little V in here. That should be a Y. Or is it? I think so. Well, maybe. Tanehke katawe yen en ale joal. Immediately followed by the noun it's referring to. She is an ambitious girl. Tahkine atoshkeo en ale fi. En travaillant en la fille. Again, ena, immediately followed by the noun it's referring to. The man is dark. Gashkete na goshu en la lom. Il y brin lom. So, gashkete na goshu is he looks dark en la lom. That man. Or, and that would be the one lady who liked to use more Cree terms, right? Then the other lady who liked to use more French would say, Il y brin lom. He is brown, the man. And again, it's not entirely, it wouldn't be proper French, but it's all French words. Il est brun l'homme. He is a good drummer. Na gachetau, na gachetau, en a le tambour, kametawet. Wow, now this is an interesting sentence. Na gachetau, en a... Okay, okay. Now, if I were to give you a sentence, Nagachitao means he is good at it. Ena le tambour emetawet. Um, Boy, okay. Ena, what is the referent in here? Ena. He, what it means is he is really good, the drum, uh, he that plays it, that plays it. Nagachitao ena le tambour kametawet. So my, when I first read this, I thought, ena, ena, what is the referent of ena? And I couldn't see the noun that they're referring to. But actually, the entire phrase that follows it, le tambour kametawet, is the noun. Ena, le tambour kametawet. He is capable, ena, le tambour kametawet. He is capable, uh, that one, the drum that plays, that plays the drum. And so here, the referent for ena is le tambour kametawet. George is my father-in-law. Mon bon père est à Georges. Mon bon père est à Georges. Now here, est à is not going to be referring to Georges. It's going to be referring to mon bon père. My father-in-law, this one, George. My father-in-law, he is. Mon bon père est à Georges. 
In fact, George might be just tapped on to the end. My my, I would say mon bon père uh, would be fine. This is my father-in-law. He is my father-in-law. Uh, and then I say George as well. I'll have to think about more about that one. That is a female deer. En femelle en la chevreau. Again, en a followed immediately by the deer. A female, this one, the deer. You'll notice that en a is very often used in what we call the copula, uh, like a copula construction, which is where I say oma la tab means this table, but la tab oma or en tab oma would mean this is a table. A table oma. En tab oma. And this sentence and these last two sentences are the same. En femelle en la chevreau. A female, this the deer. And that means this is a female deer. Or this deer is a female. Now then don't, uh, then George is my father-in-law. Again, I would say my father-in-law, this one George. And this one George uh, I could, would be the same as saying my father in this is my fa this one George is my father-in-law so there's a there's a verb in there a be verb to be but it's not overtly stated like it's not actually there it's just assumed based on the grammar of the sentence and that's very common in a lot of languages okay the last example kaya shamin enal lizar don't touch it this the lizard don't touch that lizard kaya shamin enal lizar if it was this the lizard i guess it would be Kaya shamin awa le lezar. But it's ena le lezar. Kaya shamin ena le lezar. Don't touch it. This the lizard. And ena again is immediately followed by le lezar. So I'm going to stop there. I hope that all made a little bit of sense and that after listening to all of this, you'll have some sort of an idea of what I've been trying to teach you. For exercises, you know what? Oh, what to do for exercises. <sighs> hmm. You know what? For exercises, just go along and follow this really closely and listen to it. Oh, what can you do for exercises? Okay, I'll give you exercises in a little bit.